Good evening, everybody. Tonight, we are pleased to present Knock on Wood, a high-energy acoustic folk rock duo featuring singer-songwriter Howie Newman on guitar, lead vocals, and harmonica. Howie is joined by fiddler Joe Kessler, who also plays mandolin and sings backup vocals. This program would not be possible without the aid of the Southbridge Cultural Council. We are extremely appreciative for their support, and after the program, we just ask that you fill out a brief feedback survey for them about the show. And with that, I will turn it over to Nakamura. All right, well, good evening, everybody, and uh, thanks for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. This is a very unique venue here. We have the, uh, the dining uh, seating over here. It's free white service, and then we have the luxury Luxury scene, and then in the back we have the, the bleachers with the heart. But, uh, yeah, we're knock on wood. We, we kind of look like a, a folk duo, but we, we don't really do any folk music. N not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just kind of not what we do. And uh, hi. Hi. So uh, we're gonna do a bunch of my songs and some other stuff too. I, I feel it's like really important to do original music, you know, because it's well to be honest with you. Nobody else plays my songs, so if I don't do it, it's not happening. But the other thing is, it's more of a philosophical concept that, that is that if nobody did original music, then there wouldn't be any music, you know. So we're we're trying to keep the the industry going. So, so this is a song that's about uh, kind of about relationships, you know. So I was wondering how many of you in the audience are either in a relationship now or have ever been in a relationship at any point in your life, real or imagined? Anybody? All right, good. I'm good. So you, you know one of the most important things is that you're able to accept the minor flaws of your partner. And uh, you know, I was at a wedding about three or four years ago and they had a band and they were playing that Elton John classic, uh, Your Song, and my wife leaned over to me and said, you know, when that song was popular, I was in summer camp, and everybody just loved that song. The kids were singing it, the counselors were singing it. And I thought to myself, maybe someday, somehow, somebody would write a song about me. And uh, the moral of this little story is that be careful what you wish for. <laughs>
in the geometry, it's no big deal. You angle it in, then you turn it and wheel. Straighten it out, and there you are. You lock the doors to get out of the car. But her mystery with Nary Blue, it's just one thing she can't do. Search for something like Lewis and Clark. You might be the can't parallel park. You might be the can't parallel park. After all these years, she's still in the dark. Back and forth and oh, up on the girl. Fun the family ride and gets in the dirt. Rockin' and ruin them in all her heart. My baby. Fifteen feet on either side. Just take your time now. Take a deep breath. I know you can do this. Can't parallel fall. Okay, thank you. We'll measure it after the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's on my uh, latest uh, album. And, uh, most of the songs. Or a lot of the songs I read are sort of in that you know, light-hearted vein, but this is, this is a serious song. Um, actually, it was Joe's idea to write this song. About seven months ago, actually seven months ago exactly, my, uh, my daughter had a lovely baby girl, and uh, so she's seven months old today, and uh, Joe suggested that I write a song about it, so I, I, I did. First time you've ever actually listened to anything. It's the first time I've ever listened to anything that he said, so that was kind of interesting. But uh, don't make a habit of it. <laughs> but the way I write songs is I usually get sort of a concept, and then I get a couple of lines, and then just kind of build it out from there. So, so I was thinking that, uh, well, this is not just a new addition to the family, but it's uh, like a whole new generation is coming in now. So that's sort of what where the a lot of the song came from. So this is uh, her name is Hannah Mae. And this is Hannah's song. One, two, three, four. The new generation is here. The new generation is here. This tiny little person is someone we hold here. The new
So um, the premise of this next song is that uh, as you get older, your ability to stay out late and party diminishes exponentially. So if you're around my age, and I think most of the people here are some a little young, younger, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, there's a little sing-along part at the end, which I'll uh, teach to you uh, when we get there. I figure because anybody can get you to sing along the songs you already know. I mean, that's no big deal about that. But to sing along the song you never heard before, and it's definitely more of a challenge, so we're, we're up for it here. Getting all here tonight, it's young, it's time, shake one down. Let's stay out late, celebrate, and head on into town. We got a lot of money, and the cars are filled with gas. All the clubs are open late, but I think I'll have to pay. Cause it's way past my bedtime, I should be home by now. There was a time when I'd feel just fine anyway and anyhow. Now those days are over, and I'm feeling more serene. bucks for dinner, everything in cash, but he said, I gotta warn you, this ain't no matinee, don't go on till 10 p.m. Do you think that it's okay? Well, it's way past my bedtime, I should be home by now, there was a time when I'd feel just fine anyway and anyhow, now those days are over, and I'm feeling
<laughs> you know, sometimes you're in a social situation where you have to communicate this information in a very discreet and subtle manner. Like, for instance, you're at a party or a very, very boring folk music concert. You want to get going. So you just kind of lean over to your better half and you whisper very, very gently in his or her ear, just like this. album that my goal in that was to make sure that I could never even break even on it. We hired a lot of musicians, spent a lot of time on it, and, uh, but it came out really good. So, All right, so we said we would, we'll do some a cover, we'll do a cover song here, something hopefully you know from that uh, band across the pond. <clears throat> Like to play into. You're gonna edit this out of it, out of the uh, TV show. <laughs> okay, you ready to roll? One, two, three, four. Songs about, please let me know because I, I have no idea. I don't think anybody else did either. I looked it up on the web and they were very much very helpful. So we're, we're going to slow things down here a little bit. 
It's not about a car. <laughs> Is it about? I don't think so. Um, you know, we're gonna slow things down here a little bit because we gotta sort of pace ourselves. But we're not as young as we used to be. That's true. Maybe every more. That's how time works. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, it is. So, uh, I've never actually been a, a, an early adopter when it comes to technology. You know, it's like I'm always sort of a little bit behind the time. Didn't get a smartphone until a while ago. Although I'm not totally averse to sophisticated electronic devices. You know, I have a DVR. I have a GPS. I have DVDs, uh, BVDs. I have them right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like I said, I didn't get a smartphone until a few years ago when I found out that I, I couldn't get baseball tickets without a phone, so I sort of forced into it. But at that time, I was like the only person that I personally knew above the age of 10 who didn't have one, so uh, I thought I should come up with an explanation, so here it is. I'm low tech, I'm old school. Some say I'm nothing but an old fool. I like to keep things simple as a rule. I'm low tech, I'm old school. The big in a newspaper is what I read, bad news. On paper, not some fancy little screen. It doesn't have a keyboard or a little battery. But you can take it in the bathtub or any place you flee. I'm no tech. I'm old school. He's old school. Some say I'm nothing but an old fool. I like to keep things simple as a rule. I'm low tech, I'm old school. When I buy a knot, my life to hold it in my hand. Look at all the pictures, read about the band. I've still got cassettes and vinyl. Make no mistake, I never ever even thought of buying an 8 track tape. Remember 8 track tapes? That wasn't even like low tech. That was like no tech. <laughs> I use my phone for calling people. Imagine that. Won't play a movie or pull up a map. No information overload. And that's okay, cause if my car breaks down, I just call AAA. I'm no tech, I'm old school. Some say nothing but old, old fool. I like to keep things simple as a rule. I'm low tech. I'm old school. I give this song the rousing conclusion that it uh, truly deserves. I'd like to invite all the low tech, old school folks in the audience to join with me on the chorus one time. You know who you are. And the rest of you, you can take this opportunity to uh, check your email. Send a text message or post a photo of your dinner on Instagram or whatever you like. Do you know what Instagram is? I know what Instagram is. I, I'm not actually a member, but I know what it is. Anyway, where was I? Alright, so it starts off, I'm low tech, I'm old school. Here we go. I'm low tech, I'm, low tech. I'm old school. I'm old school. Some say, say. nothing but old fool. I like to keep, I like to keep things simple as a rule. I'm low tech, I'm old school, and my kids don't really think it's all that cool. But I'm low tech, I'm old school.
actually, that's on my latest album, and uh, Joe does play the mandolin on that, on that track. As, as uh, on a few other tracks as well. Okay, this is my uh, pandemic song. And uh, I wrote it, uh, I guess, last summer. Uh, looked like we were coming out of the pandemic, you know, and everything was going to be great. And then uh, a <laughs> few, few things intervened, and we didn't quite come back as quickly as we had hoped. But uh, we're, we're in better shape now, I think, than we were. And everybody was very optimistic back then. And, uh, and uh, I guess the, uh, the concept behind the song was that, it, you know, in 2020, there were a lot of high school seniors and college seniors that didn't really get to have a formal graduation or any kind of graduation. So I, I thought that was kind of a shame. And I also kind of took that to a metaphorical level. Uh, that's what songwriters do. And uh, I was thinking, look, we're all in this gigantic class together. You know, we sort of moved forward and uh, graduated together. Most of us did anyway. So that's uh, called the class of 2020. to the people, you know, who kept us going all those, all those months, years, uh, the mail, people who delivered the mail, the medical people and everything else. So, we owe them quite a bit. All right. This is a song I wrote, this is a song of appreciation, because uh, I am very appreciative that I'm able to play music full time. I started doing it about six, seven years ago, and, uh, and you know, the fact that I'm actually making a living playing music is pretty exciting, although to be fair, it's a living for someone living in the 1960s, but uh, it's pretty cool. So here we go. When I was growing up, I used to sing in the shower, I dream about being a rock and roll star, and I grew up and got paid. 
eight by the hour. I learned that freedom wouldn't get you too far. But in the back of my mind, I always kept my hopes alive. For too long, I finally figured out it was the way to go. All the while, I just had to smile. Make sure your beats working any day. Just the thought of making music, paying my own way, makes me happy. Through and through. Job he's working. That's the truth. I ain't rich, I don't live in a mansion. I drive around town in a beat up car. But I got a job that's really in the past. Got a hold on me deep down in my heart. Oh my, just a lucky guy. Your beats working any day. Just the thought of making music, paying my own way, makes me happy. Through and through, your beats working. when you have an audience. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. <laughs> so during the uh, pandemic, you know, uh, one of the big events of the day was uh, was going out for a walk, you know? And that was, that was the big, big event. So uh, I, I would tell my wife, all right, I'm going out, I'm taking the walk of life. So we eventually had to learn that song. Here it is. Okay, one, two, three, four. Dedication and devotion, turning all the nighttime into the day. Do the song of 
about the sweet love you want. You do the song about the night. You do the walk. Do the walk of life. We got any baseball fans out here? I see this gentleman has these his Red Sox hat. Right? Probably the only reason he's here tonight because the Red Sox are off, right? Yeah. Yeah, they off. So what? Are, what? Are, I was like, a, I was a sports writer for 18 years, and I've been a songwriter for a long time. So it was inevitable that the worlds were going to collide, you know. And uh, to steal a phrase from one of my favorite TV shows, so I wrote about it. I've written about 15 or 16 baseball songs at this point, and uh, we'd like to do one for you right now. I actually do an entire show of baseball songs, and uh, I think I have four or five left. So the schedule of those shows are out there. And so I do songs, baseball songs, and trivia, and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty entertaining. I don't think anything is that close to here, but it, it's worth the trip, I'll tell you. It really is. But anyway, this is a song about... Uh, about Johnny Damon, remember Johnny Damon from the 2004 curse-busting world championship winning Red Sox? And he was very instrumental in the Red Sox winning the World Series that year. I mean, he could do a lot of things. He could, uh, he could run, he could hit, he could hit for power, he could field. He, he couldn't throw worth a damn. But, uh, and he had a lot of big hits in the postseason. He, uh, he had a grand slam against the Yankees in the seventh game of the league championship series. Right field. And he had four extra base hits in four games of the World Series. So he was quite a, quite a contributor that year. Following season, he batted 316, which was his all-time career high. And then over the winter, he became a free agent. And he did the unthinkable, which was to sign a contract with the New York Yankees for a mere $12 million more. I mean, the nerve of that guy. So, <laughs> I wrote a song about it, and, and people thought it was pretty amusing back then. And then, you know, after a few years, it got a little dated, so I, I stopped playing it. 
but uh, now it's it's nostalgic, it's retro, so it's, uh, it's making a comeback. <laughs> why did you go, Johnny Damon? Why did you take the cash and run? Do you think in New York City you'll be having this much fun? They cut your hair, shaved your beard, you smiled, and you said thanks. We don't love you anymore, that's how you're with the gangs. <laughs> Perhaps they didn't tell you, Perhaps you did not know. Left center fields, 450 plus, and you gotta make that throw. That's me. There's lots more ground to cover, you're getting slower every year. And I bet by mid-July you wish that you were here. Why did you go, Johnny Damon? Why did you take the cash and run? Do you think in New York City you'll be having this much fun? They cut your hair and shave your beard you smile. Just say thanks. We don't love you anymore. George, you don't like losing, so be best be on your guard. If you don't hit 300, life will never be so hard. And if you don't make the playoffs, win a couple of rounds. Fans will cuss and swear at you, run you out of town. Why did you go, Johnny Damon? Why did you take the cash and run? Do you think in New York City, you'll be having this much fun? They cut your hair and shave your beard and smile and just say thanks. We don't love you anymore, it's now you're with the gangs. Okay, hit it, boy. type ball player. But uh, the Red Sox, they had a long-range plan, you know, they had a hot shot in the minor leagues named Jacoby Ellsbury, and he became the center fielder before too long. So I actually rewrote the final chorus uh, to reflect that bit of information. And then Ellsbury signed with the Yankees, too, so I just said that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give Joe, Joe's been playing up the storm. I'm going to give him a little break here, and I'll do something by myself. This is the moment that some of you people have been waiting for. I'm going to be doing the title track from my uh, most recent CD called When You're Happy. And it was inspired by a trip to a yoga retreat with my lovely wife uh, several years ago. Uh, lots of relaxation, contemplation, meditation, yoga, vegetarian food, people saying the word wonderful every other sentence. And, I was sitting by myself one afternoon, contemplating deep, deep thoughts and channeling my inner soul, and I asked myself, what am I doing here? No, that's not true. I, I came to the realization that, you know, when you're in a marriage, it's compromise, it's sacrifice, it's doing things you wouldn't ordinarily do, and that's what keeps the love alive and uh, keeps things interesting. So I took notes the whole weekend, and uh, then I came home and wrote this song, and when we recorded it for the album, we made it into a swing tune. So we had like clarinet and piano and drums and backup singers and the whole nine yards. And so to give you the, the full jazz experience, I'm going to do the karaoke version 
of the song. And there's a little sing-along part in it for you uh, in the chorus when I sing You're Happy, the first two times you sing You're Happy. So the, uh, the tech crew is on vacation this week. I've got to set this up myself. It'll take me about 15 seconds, so don't, don't go anywhere. a foreign film with English subtitles, even if it's four hours long. Because when you're happy, you're happy. I'm happy too. When you're happy, you're happy. I love you through and through. I'll gladly clean the attic and even go for food. But when you're happy, I'm happy too. I'll watch the home garden shadow. I'll grin and bang. I'll buy a brand new suit, even though I'll never wear it. In fancy restaurants, order food I can't pronounce. Smile the whole even through. Well, this is the instrumental part of the song, so I don't have a whole lot to do here. I mean, if I knew how to dance, I could do a little dance for you, but I don't, so I won't. But I will tell you a little story. I actually sang this song at my daughter's wedding. The karaoke version, you know. I mean, I was the father of the bride and his welcoming toast. And I thought this would be good advice for a young couple. So that was like five and a half years ago, and she's still talking to me, so everything is good. <laughs> I'll do the laundry, I'll wash the dishes, I will eat. Whatever you cook, and I will say that it's delicious when you're talking to me. I'll listen intently, even if the ball game is off. Because when you're happy, you're happy. I'm happy too. When you're happy, you're happy. I love you through and through. I'll let you be happy. And even if it's so good, because when you're happy, I'm Happy too. One more time. When you're happy, you're happy. I'm happy too. When you're happy, you're happy. I love you through and through. It makes me condescending. My love for you is never ending. When you're happy, I'm happy too. When you're happy, I'm happy too. Thank you very much. I know what you're thinking. You're saying to yourself right now, this is just some cheap publicity stunt to try to promote the CD. So, let me tell you something. It's working. You're right. You got me. So it's called When You're Happy. It's on the table over there, as are my other CDs. And uh, Joe's got some CDs where he played on it as well. So we have multiple ways of separating you from your hard-earned cash. <laughs> So my, my first CD came out in uh, like 2001, and it was very exciting for me to have an album out, you know, because uh, it, just, it just was, you know, I never made an album before. And uh, I have a background in writing and public relations, so I had this big publicity campaign and uh, sent it out to all the newspapers, the folk music magazines, the radio stations, everything. And uh, interestingly enough, the first media outlet that contacted me was from Belgium. <laughs> Honest to God. So I thought, well, this is like really weird. I, I should write a song about it. So I did. So the way it happened was that 
I was advertising the CD on the web, and this guy in Belgium had a radio show, and he saw it, so he, he asked me to send him the CD, so I did. And, and it got on the air. I said, cool. You know, and about, a, about a week later, I get an email from another radio station in Belgium. They, they want the CD, too, so I sent it out there. And this time it got multiple airplays. It was like in a rotation or something. And so now I'm totally fired up about this whole thing. And, uh, well, to make a long story short, within like a couple of weeks, there are five radio stations in Belgium playing this album. Of course, none in the greater Boston area, but five in Belgium. I'm starting to get CD orders from Europe. Now, this sounds like a pretty preposterous story, but I'm telling you, that's exactly the way it happened in the song. In, in real life, it was slightly different. And I do feel compelled to tell you the truth because, I mean, do I look like the kind of person who would just make something up just to get a rise out of the audience? You know, you know, we, it, was a, you know, it was a prominent political figure who did that for a long time and still doing it. But that's not me. I, I, I will tell you the truth. So, what happened was the guy from Belgium sent me the email, I sent him the CD, and that's the last I heard. So I'm thinking, well, this is not going to make the most exciting song in the world, so I sort of embellish the story of it and wrote a song about what could have and what really should have happened and here's how it turned out. My agent hasn't called me in 18 weeks and I really could use a few bucks. If I don't get a gig in a day or two, I'm gonna have to go back to driving. It's making me crazy, it's getting me down I can't seem to make any waves in this town But I'm big in Belgium, I'm loaded with fame Brussels and yeah, they all know my name They love me in Belgium, over there on the main Well, I'm the biggest thing in Belgium, silly dance All the critics are sore to please The radio stations send back my CD The club owners hide when I walk through the door I can't take this kind of rejection no more I dream about playing in big sold out halls But even my mother won't return my phone call But I'm big in Belgium I'm a lawyer for fame Brussels and from the get, they all know my name. They love me in Belgium, over there on the main. Well, I'm the biggest thing in Belgium, silly thing. Joe Kessler, he did a great job every time. And also the people here at the Jacob Edwards Library for inviting us. I appreciate that. Nice plug. And then the Southbridge Cultural Council for funding tonight's concert, and et cetera, et cetera. You can give them a round of applause. But most of all, you people, because, you know, we appreciate it. I mean, this is a really good audience. They did. You guys did everything that a good audience is supposed to do. You, you listened, you clapped, you sang along, you laughed at some of my jokes, so I, I appreciate that. So, 
we uh, we have a lot more con. We do a lot of concerts outdoors, and uh, so we have our schedule of concerts on the table over there. It's sort of similar to this, but we do more covers, and there's like dogs and frisbees and stuff like that. Families, you know, it's a little different, a little less intimate, but uh, but it's fun. So our schedule out there, my baseball shows, and there's a free CD out there also, and uh, the CDs are available for sale. So thank you. But like I said, we appreciate your coming out tonight. We're going to dedicate this song to you guys because I think I read something recently where Southbridge, that's what we are, right? Southbridge. Okay. Now, Southbridge is one of the most rocking towns in the entire eastern seaboard. So uh, we'd like to. Where'd you hear that? I, I read it online somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's what this song's all about, sort of. <laughs> there was a baby in me, we ran out late Saturday night. And half our life, oh baby, we looked so right. If you up and got a happy home with two, I don't know what I can't tell you. That's all right, don't you look at it as cool as it is. Found a little place that I really didn't look half bad. Had a whiskey on the rocks and a chain of a dog for a jukebox. I put the cold rock in that can, but don't hate play what it's going to man. Come on, baby, let's get out of here right away. We'll all rock this town, rock it inside. What are we going to do? Rock this town, make it scream and shout. Well, let's rock, rock, rock band, rock. We're gonna rock till we pop, gonna rock till we drop. We're gonna rock this town, rock it in
God's going to grade you like